This is Edge of Sports on the PPI Network with your host, Dave Zire. Edge of Sports Radio returns. Here's Dave Zire. Used to be. Every day. Every day. Always. Well, why are you playing this song, <laughs> Jeremiah? It was like the hip hop remix of No Doubt. Well, who, who's singing this, Jeremiah? Who is this? This is unspeakably terrible. But that's okay. This is Edge of Sports Radio. I'm Dave Zyron. We are back. Not exactly. I, I like. I got it made. Special Ed. Yeah. Run DMC. All right, man. Look, we're back. Coach Kevin McNutt. So happy to have in the interviewee chair the chief of the Sports Fan Coalition, Brian Frederick. Brian, how you doing, sir? Good, Dave. How you doing? Good. There's this particular development that I know Coach and I want to talk to you about. And I want you to like talk to us as if we're five years old, explain it to the audience. What is this sports caucus that's been formed by the U.S. Congress, and what purpose does it have? That was a couple guys on uh, on Capitol Hill yesterday. Re- uh, Joe Barton from Texas, Steve Cohn from Tennessee. And that's a I'm, Republican and a Democrat. That's right. And Bobby Rush from Chicago, the only guy to ever beat Barack Obama in an election. Yeah, another Democrat beat Obama in a primary. Uh, so anyway, they, they've they created this uh, con- uh, Congressional Collegiate Sports Caucus that's uh, basically a caucus on the Hill. just means a group of people that get together and address the same sorts of issues. And so they're concerned about uh, the state of collegiate sports, and they specifically are advocating for a college football playoff. Off, and uh, that's something that Sports Fans Coalition we've been we've been advocating for as well for a long time. So, what is it about this caucus? I said this in the intro to the show that maps you look at it a little bit suspect in terms of its efficacy. Uh, well, I, you know, we actually applaud the the, the creation of it. Uh, we we just uh, we think that there's some 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 important things that need to be addressed right now. One of those is blackouts, um, and uh, and we can talk about that in a minute. But uh, you know, Representative Barton introduced his legislation again uh, on on playoffs, which is to say that. You, it, it prohibits the BCS from using the, the moniker National Championship Game. So mm-hmm. uh, that, to me, seems a little bit problematic because it seems like a free speech issue. You know, like, mm-hmm. why, why should we be trying to prohibit how they use the name National mm-hmm. Championship Game? Why it, not? it seems petty, too. Right. Yep. Let's let's focus on some, some f- more fundamental things here, which are, for instance, the, uh, the, the student fees that go to subsidize collegiate sports. I mean, a lot of these Occupy uh, Wall Street and Occupy folks around the nation uh, are suffering from serious student debt. A lot of that student debt was caused uh, from uh, upwards of $1,000 they pay in yearly fees to the athletic department. And uh, the athletic department, 12 out of 130 athletic departments are operating in the black. All the rest of them are in the red. So they're just eating up. Consumer Wait, twelve uh, uh, out of one hundred and thirty are are actually making a profit. The rest are in Holy debt. Holy cow! So the universities yeah. subsidize these athletic programs. The taxpayers subsidize these athletic programs, and the students through their student fees subsidize them. Uh, and so you know th- th- this is a serious crisis that's going on in in terms of college athletics. And if you could have a college football playoff that everybody, even proponents of the BCS bowl system, agree would bring in uh, seven hundred and fifty to a billion dollars more per year. Yeah, why be not? Amazing. Do that and, and get some of that money on the table and spread mm-hmm. it around to schools that really need it. Our, you know, we shouldn't be subsidizing these programs anymore until we do that. Mm, this is Edge of Sports Radio. I'm Dave Zyron talking to Brian Frederick, who's making all kinds of sense, head of the Sports yeah. Fan Coalition, sportsfans.org. Coach, you got a question. So uh, everybody says it. You spoke so eloquently on, on it. Why isn't it taking place? <laughs> is it just a couple of fat cats at the Sugar Bowl and like this junk yeah, guy out of Arizona? I mean, if he has the bowl, I, I, what's going on? Why isn't there any movement to, toward this thing? Jim Delaney now, is Let me his just name. add one thing yeah. before you answer that yeah. question. Anybody, because I played college ball, basketball, and anybody, because all the talking heads are ranting about, hey, this, you know, th- this is good and, and bowl games are great, any athlete – Worth his salt wants a playoff, so you can't. Don't even tell me about the athletes. If you played any kind of level, you don't want a computer deciding a championship. Players want to play. I'm sorry. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, no, but that's, what, that's, what's the yeah. block, Brian? Yeah. What's what the is block? the? It's so logical. What's the, the, block? the block is the traditional powers, uh, and it, it's basically a system where the uh, the powers that ha- the, the, the powers that be would rather keep their share of the pie and keep the pie smaller than to grow the pie bigger and to lose their share. So greed. that's that's it's greed. It's it's hoarding of power, and that's Jim Jim Delaney, the commissioner of the Big Ten, mm. is one of the primary ones uh, that refused to cede any sort of uh, control over college football as it is. And, uh, you know, the, the problem is that uh, 
the there there are enough schools that are afraid to go to another way that they they're letting these big powers that be dictate what happens but i think that i th- i mean it's change is coming change is it's inevitably coming down the road it's just a question of when and uh, i think we're looking at a, a plus one system at, uh, probably within the next few years ooh i was hoping you going to say next year you say yeah, see that feud is so no, nebulous no. i can see, see that 2017 2018 yeah. that's horrible yeah. well, man. You about this car- like to me one of the great injustices in all of this is that college players produce this revenue mm-hmm. and they don't see any see anything mm-hmm. of it either in terms of guaranteed four year instead of year to year scholarships, money waiting for them when they're twenty five for continuing education or a stipend. I mean, there are a lot of different ways it can do it. I'm less interested in how it how it's done than that there is some form of visible visceral compensation. Can you tell us if the people on the Hill, if that's even part of the discussion? <laughs> that That's such a can of worms that nobody wants to open because it's <sighs> such a difficult situation. But everybody who's, uh, uh, you know, looked at this would agree that this is totally uh, unfair, that you have students who uh, are doing the work of professionals, but getting paid nothing. And, and you know, you'll have the, the few holdouts that'll say they're getting a free education, but, it's such you know, BS. It, 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 it really is just apologist BS. And, it's BS uh, because they're not getting an education. Right. That's what that's, makes it that, true that's, BS. That's, that's absolutely I mean, right. I'll talk to 10 athletes, and um, if, if you find me 10 athletes who uh, and ask them what their major was and then ask them if that major was their choice or was done to fit around sports, my experience is 8 or 9 out of 10 mm-hmm. at the mm-hmm. big-time schools will say the major was picked so it would work around yeah, the sports program. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I, I think that the the state of of the NCA right now is it's it's seriously in crisis. Uh, you know, my my father was a career uh, athletic administrator, an athletic director. He worked as a, a chair of the men's basketball committee in mm-hmm. the NCAA. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've talked to to his former colleagues, uh, and and they say, you know, they've never seen a situation where. The, they're just trying to get by from paycheck to paycheck, hoping that, it, that the train continues to run because it's Amazing. so on the verge of just breaking apart. And mm. we saw at the University of Maryland this year that it did break apart. I mean, they chose to put a lot of money into football. They're paying Ralph Friedgen $2 million to not coach. And they cut, I believe it's eight sports teams. Is that mm. right? Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Hey, my, my, my University of Kansas Jayhawks are $60 million in debt. They have to pay are $6 million dollars to Turner Gill for three year, yep. more years Turner and two, two to his assistants. And then they have Charlie Weiss they just hired at 2.5 a year. Yeah, they have wow. $60 million in debt. Wow. And football is the prime Absolutely. cause of this. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's like going to Vegas. They're pushing their chips into the middle of the table, hoping that if the team is good and the boosters get excited, they'll be getting the yep. black. Yep. So let me ask you this Sports Fan Coalition, other things you guys are working on. You yep. touched on it before. The blackout rule. Once again, explain to the audience exactly what the blackout rule is, why it should be stopped, and what SFC is doing about it. Yeah, so, I mean, blackouts are basically, you sit down in front of your TV, you're ready to watch the game, and, oh, the game's been blacked out. Uh, It's not being shown in your area for one of a couple reasons. Either it's because the stadium isn't sold out, and so the league rules kick in that they can't show the game locally. This is happening this weekend in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. Happens in Cincinnati a lot, Mm -hmm. Tampa Bay. Jacksonville. Or uh, it's it's because the... uh, the uh, uh, there's a, a retransmission dispute it's called between media companies that are warring back and forth and so they take the signal down so anyway what sports fans coalition has done has been doing is we've been uh, uh, talking to the FCC a lot and we filed a petition with several other con- uh, consumer interest groups telling the FCC because so you have the league has their own blackout rules well the FCC blackout rule says that if uh, if a local broadcaster can't show the game, well, then satellite and cable can't pick it up either because these days satellite and cable could just pick it up from another uh, market mm-hmm. and show it. And so all the fans in, in, uh, in Buffalo, for instance, could see the game. So we've asked the FCC, hey, you've had this rule on your book for 40 years. Don't you think it's time to just take another look at blackouts and see mm-hmm. if this is a, a rule that should happen? And we think that the FCC is actually about to open this up to a public uh, proceeding. And this would be a huge victory for sports fans because suddenly... Suddenly, and the sports fan coalition. And the sports mm-hmm. fans coalition. Suddenly, the uh, uh, the blackout rule would become would come under this uh, public scrutiny. Everybody would have a chance to comment. That's when you know fans need to step up and say we're sick and tired of blackouts. Uh, and the leagues, because the leagues are going to bring in their lobbyists. The leagues have such unlimited money here. They spent two million dollars lobbying Congress Whoa. last year. Mm-hmm. They're going to bring in their big time lawyers. They're going to tell the FCC you need to keep this rule on the book because it keeps Green Bay from from uh, from losing. Uh, 
their team, which is absurd, but that's absolutely the argument absurd. they always make. It's a great uh, argument in 1970. <laughs> absolutely. You know, Buffalo, I, I just put this up today. Buffalo has a population of 279,000. They have a stadium that is 71,000. So they were seven, seven, maybe 73,000. They were 7,000 tickets short, which is still more than nine other uh, stadiums. So they couldn't sell out uh, Ralph Wilson Stadium, but they would have sold out nine other stadiums, but they have a population of 289,000. That means that a quarter of the people of Buffalo are expected to be in that stadium on Sunday or they don't get to see the game locally. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. It's it's an outrage. Brian, before you go... Tell people how they can get involved in please. Sports Fan Coalition. Yeah, please. Absolutely. We'd love to have you. We uh, Just check out sportsfans.org. Sign up, sportsfans.org. We just, uh, we're just a membership-based uh, uh, nonprofit just fighting for fans. And, uh, yeah, check out uh, sportsfans.org, and you can follow me on Twitter at B-R-I-F-R-E-D, Bri Fred. I find that to be an indispensable Twitter follow for everybody yes, out sir. there. Yes, B R I F R E D. Thanks, Dave. Yes, that sir. means a lot coming from you. Oh, an expert Twitterer like myself, an expert <laughs> twit like myself. As uh, Stephen Colbert said, yeah, I've twatted. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that line. All right. He's yeah. sizing you up, Dave. He's going to want to take you one on one, Brian. No, I'm telling you. Please. He's going to challenge you to hoops. N- not this he guy. He can play. Maybe if it's game I'll, three. I'll this up. guy's in amazing shape, man. We do game Brian three. He could play hoops. <laughs> yeah. He's going to be the center. Yeah. I think you're going to be on the bench there, Dave. Oh, bench! Hey, I'm an outside three. Are you kidding me? I, 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 man, I, <laughs> I, t- shoot three. I tickle the twines like Liberace, baby. But yeah, we got to go to break right now. We'll be back right after this with Derek Higgins, who has uh, produced a remarkable remarkable new documentary about the history of African Americans in the NFL. We'll be back right after this. Don't move. Dave Zirin will be right back with more Edge of Sports Radio. Edge of Sports on the PPI Network.